It's lovely to be in Tiruvananthapuram this afternoon. Thank you all for giving us a week day afternoon to come and talk to us. I have two superstars with me today and I'm really really happy to make Kevin's acquaintance. I haven't met him before. I've not even had five minutes to talk to him today because he's such a busy man. No, high demand, hot cake, you get the idea, right? And on my left is a very close friend. Uh, we could almost say that we are friends in tears and in cups. We both live in Bangalore, we meet often, and uh, it gives me great pleasure to he be here to talk to her. Given that we are actually talking about books that involve mainly writing for younger adults, I'm going to keep this session very, very light. I'm going to keep it fun. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope to have a 10-minute question-answer session where we may ask you a question, so please pay attention. Um, I think what happens mostly is authors rarely get an opportunity to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. So today I will start by asking both Kevin and Vani to tell me a little, to tell us actually, a little about who they are on the inside who are you, Kevin Messer? What motivates you? Who is your ideal reader? What has your journey, uh, author journey been like? And tell us about yourself so we love you more. Hello, hi. Uh, so I think there's a lot of questions. Sorry. I think I, I, I don't know if I'll be able to answer all of them in one hour. Um, so I'll probably take a lot of hours for it. We're going to sit here all night long to talk about my life. Uh, but uh, no, so see the thing is, um, how I am as a person, I would answer it in one word. Um, I'm quite an insecure man or a boy, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm still figuring it out. If we were not insecure, we would not be writing books. Yes, absolutely. I absolutely agree. Um, so I'm quite an insecure uh, guy, uh, a writer, and uh, someone who is going through a lot of stuff, a lot of thoughts, a lot of ideas, and then just penning it down. Uh, my author journey is b has been quite, uh, I would say, a turbulent one. Uh, it started off with me just writing um, at the age of 12. Uh, rehashing and rip-offing everything that I could come across whenever which I was reading to something which I was ri ended up writing at the age of 21 and getting my book published, uh, self-published actually in the beginning, uh, selling just about 100, 200 copies to probably selling a lakh of, uh, in a year's time. And um, yeah, and then since then I've been published, uh, I've published more than 13 books, around 12, 13 books I mean, yeah. And um, uh, doing pretty okay, yeah, so. That's actually uh, commendable. Uh, I just realized he's just a couple of years older than my kids and it's going to be very difficult not to treat you like a <laughs> child, but uh, I will try. No, I'm uh, okay with you treating me as a child. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just keeping it light. Vani, same question to you. I know you so well, but I'm sure I don't know everything about the Vani inside. Oh my God, I don't know if anybody wants to know the <laughs> real any of us. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I feel if I have to talk about myself, I'm an accidental everything. You know, I was an accidental engineer. I was actually a software engineer. And then I was an accidental entrepreneur. And then an accidental writer. But I think one thing that's not accidental is that I'm a reader. I think books have been a constant companion. And I, I you know, even in my bio for a long time, I had, uh, uh, you know, reader, writer, Netflixer. So I consume good content in any form uh, and shape. It doesn't have to be only books. Um, yeah, c coming to uh, writing, mythology has been another constant uh, interest. Probably since I was very, very young, you know, I grew up with my grandmother and that's what happens when you grow up with grandmothers, you fall in love with mythology. So, uh, uh, but then it was always at the back of my head that, uh, you know, my kids don't know what I know. You know, I have to write for them. 
So I started reading the Puranas in their originals and started sifting stories. And this is when the accidental writer part comes. I was running a, an online library. Uh, that's where I met Nandita and a lot of these authors. Uh, very, very fortunate to have been, uh, had a successful run with uh, the library for 13 years. Met fantastic readers, fantastic writers. So one offshoot was uh, the editor of Amar Chitra Katha had come uh, to the library for an event. And when she looked at my <coughs> mythology collection, she asked me, you know, what are you doing with all of this? I said, I'm just taking the stories out for my kids. She said, no, no, write for us. You know what, let the other kids read as well. So that's how uh, writing started, actually. I'm like, oh, OK, you know, if somebody wants me to write, why not? So after that, I have been writing for Amar Chitra Katha. And then I also did a retelling of one of the classics, Bhasa's uh, Swapna Masavadatta, I don't know how many of you even know it. So those classic uh, uh, plays really interest me because they are like 16 to 20 pages long, but their story arc, as what they say, the uh, start, the conflict, and the end, it's just simply amazing. So I think, uh, you know, that was, that's another of my interest to take these plays and somehow, you know, give it uh, a more accessible uh, sort of a shape and form for today's age. So my latest book is a historical fiction. Again, uh, you know, history interests me a lot. Somehow mythology writers also seem to be interested in uh, history. Uh, I think uh, Kevin will agree with me. Uh, probably, you know, what you don't see is all either history or mythology. Probably that's how we treat it. Uh, so that's a historical fiction and uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's I never thought I would write a thriller, but then, you know, once I got into the lives of the kings and the queens and the princes, you know, it turned into a thriller. Perfect answer. Thank you so much, Vani. Now, uh, you know, um, to do good at my job here, I started researching and uh, there's a lot about Kevin Whistle online. Uh, if you're a fan, you know where to look for it. Um, but the first video I read, I saw, had him say that, you know, it's very rare to find young writers. Everybody retires and then they come to writing and I'm like, oh my God, I'm that category, you know, he hates me and I don't know what he's going to do about it. But, you know, okay, that's the light part of it. But I also realize that, see, as a parent, I would like my kids who are now grown up to start writing. They read, but they don't write. So what really was it in a young person like you and you really were young at 21 to even get the guts to write? Because at 21 we were lost, you know? Mm -hmm. To get the guts to write and then from then to now to have such a fabulous career arc. How did you manage it and what were your compulsions? Uh, so uh, what really helped me was that I was, I'd been writing since the age of 12 actually. Oh. So uh, I published my first book at the age of 14 and then 16 and then 18. And then at the age of 21, I published, and that's where my published Kalki Daftar Vishnu, and Dharma of the Kalki Daftar Vishnu, and that uh, started my professional writing career. Uh, so where did it come from? I, uh, I believe I said it in my last session as well, that uh, it came from pure and sheer arrogance. And the arrogance was that I could be a writer if Charles Dickens could be a writer. Because I happened to uh, read Oliver Twist, the unabridged versions, the very so thin versions of the classic and I happened to just uh, fell in love with writing that time and storytelling for that matter. So yeah, so that's how it happened. Vani, you are, uh, you know, of course, one of Vani's, uh, uh, you know, she, she's a person who reinvents herself and she, though I'm talking to you in the, you know, in as, her, as a mythology writer, as a writer of, you know, historical texts and historical dramas or dramas from our history, um, one of your hallmarks is that you're a very serious researcher. So could you take us through how you research and what, how important is research to you? Actually, to be honest, I don't do, I don't have to do as much research as I do. You know, it has become like a, uh, what do I say, a disease. I, I never stop. I don't know when to stop researching and to start writing. In fact, my kids always ask me, Mama, you know, it has been what? A year, a year and a half, you're still researching. So uh, maybe uh, researching, it's not just one book. For example, uh, when I wrote uh, my latest book, it's about the Gupta dynasty. So what sparked my interest was just one small incident that was a play once again. Uh, as I told you, the short plays, the, the classic plays really interest me. When I read that play, you know, it was just mind-blowing. 
so then i thought wait a minute this is like sibling rivalry this is uh, uh, you know so relevant even to today's uh, day and age and then i started researching more about the gupta dynasty and from the guptas i went back a little i went forward a little uh, but then finally you know what i had i still have material probably for three or four books and uh, you know uh, one of the fellow authors was telling me writing history is like cooking something with palak uh, you know you you take this much and finally it reduces to this much so uh, when i started writing uh, you know the urge was to put in everything that i knew but then i could not do that but research part coming back to your question uh, it it really i i really love it i love to research i love to read as i said uh, more than an author i am a reader so um, yeah Uh, the, the deep research is important but when you are a writer it's okay you know uh, you don't have to do uh, too much either too much isn't good either uh, yeah, yeah you have to just strike that balance so this i'll just try to do justice to the you know to the topic that we've been given today which is around history and mythology right and uh, what do you think is the balance between the two do you think the uh, they help you knowing that there is a differentiation between what actually occurred and what has been fictionalized about it this is a question to both of you how do you see this interplay of history and mythology in your writing in your life in your understanding of indian culture first of all i love the music you know i think i think it's a fantastic music i don't know who's playing that song though it basically describes my life right now uh but uh, history and uh, mythology i think at the end of the day what i personally feel is that uh i have a feeling that you know when i talk to a lot of people right what happens is uh, i happen to have a very lovely chat at a college with a mythologist and uh, he said i asked him i said do you think that these these stories that we read about do you think they're history he said i'm sorry kevin there are there are no flying monkeys that exist right. right and he's a he's an he's an actual mythologist and he knows more about mythology and probably than all of us combined together in one together right so i was like okay that's a very interesting thing so he thinks it's the story right on the same flip side i went to another college where i had a chat with a professor and i and he asked me that oh uh, uh, what do you write i said i write mythology he's like oh you write history i said ki yeah that probably history to you probably mythology to me probably fantasy to someone else um he like no no it's history na it's, it's, it's this is ethias no like, yeah that's that's true that's true for you so i think i think these answers these there are uh, there are a lot of perspectives there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, uh, different different uh, takes on the uh, original myths and what i really really uh, love about it is the fact that we are able to discuss about it and we are able to and as long as we are uh, we are we are having an open attitude about it we are having an open uh, thought thought uh, process about it i think it doesn't really matter whether it's mythology or history or how true and how true it is not because for probably the second person it could be 90% true 100% true but for um, for for another person it could be just 10% true you know so it really doesn't matter how true it is or how not true it is what matters is that we are in a place where we are able to talk about it and we are able to discuss about it and where we are able to understand each other's perspective and respect that very good answer um see i mean many people uh, when they look at my writing i am like yeah this time i have written a historical so they're like yeah the same right you know you have been writing mythology uh, and uh, no <laughs> there is a difference i mean definitely there is a difference between history and mythology and as uh, kevin pointed out the lines are blurry right i mean uh, to me when you say history you know for example uh, even the mauryans or slightly before that the nandas you know there are still uh, there are some inscriptions there are these pillars and there are these monuments so there is some evidence you can actually go researching about them and there are actually historians who are doing academic work on it so you can't really take all the liberty that you want when you are writing a historical fiction so you have to you know stick to at least some of the well known facts and then you can weave a story around it you have to weave a story around it uh, so that would be history and mythology uh you know if you take ramayana and mahabharata we of course you know as a living religion we do believe that that happened at some point in time so okay that you know once again they are called the itihasa in uh, you know the uh, the scriptural world they are not really called mythology 
mythology are the Puranas. So this is like the third segment where you know you hear the story of uh, uh, one of the avatars of Vishnu or uh, you know uh, the Krishna Leela. You know these are the things which come under Puranas. So uh, even then I get into trouble for calling it mythology, calling myself an author of mythology because people say you know call it theology. Don't call it mythology because it's a living religion. But the lines are bloody. You know what? You, you cannot go so strictly with the semantic meaning of it because I am not really a theologist. I write. I am not even a mythologist. I write mythology. So is there a difference? Definitely there is a difference. Uh, but as I said, most of those uh, who write history also write mythology. So maybe you know it's the research part, as Nandita said, that kind of you know keeps us going or uh, you know what you don't see uh, that, that fantasy world that you create in your head that you want to kind of you know lay bare in front of the readers uh, but most of the mythology writers also happen to be history uh, writers and readers thank you so you know how these cranky intellectuals have their own uh, whatever so today i will try to be the cranky intellectual for about 2 or 3 seconds and i will tell you about what makes me very angry about publishing books, readers, etc. in India. You know, we have a very strict hierarchy. If you are writing a serious academic book, you are up there. And if you are writing something light, like, uh, don't ask me what are my credentials, why am I taking this session, because I basically write about human relationships, whether love, divorce, whatever, you know. Um, and I feel constantly that, you know, when I meet about, say, another 20 writers, I'm like very bottom on the food chain because they are writing about wars and I'm writing about love. So, you know, they are superior. Similarly, both of you must have felt that, that, you know, yes, you're writing mythology. Yes, you're writing history, but you're not writing for adult serious. You are writing children's stories and therefore you are somewhere low down on the food chain, right? It must have come across that way that you're not a serious writer. And as a writer, let me tell you, to write simply is far, far, far to write for children is impossible almost. You have to have God standing behind you and giving you the courage to do it. And the other thing is to write a very simple book, very simple sounding with no big words and yet keeping it together is much, much more difficult than writing something that is very intellectual and going all over the place. So every book is a gift to the reader. And we don't understand that because we are all, you know, we look for labels. We've been trained by the, you know, by the industrial world to look for labels. And we look for labels among writers as well. Is this writer, does that writer have a serious label, intellectual label, this label, etc. So I would like your opinion and, you know, also maybe if you have an anecdote or two where somebody came and said, but, you know, you are writing for children or but your research is not up to mark, but this did not happen with Karna, you know, has something like that happened to either of you? And I'll ask you first, maybe. Um, well, you have known me for a long time. Uh, see, to me, uh, there is, see, see, I have so many of my friends who don't like themselves uh, in their, in photographs. I like my photos, I like my books and if you know, uh, if you think I'm not up to the mark, that's your problem because I have put in my work, I have done my work. So to me, it's very superior. You know, it, there may be, of course, you know, I genuinely respect people who do uh, great work. It need not be in, uh, you know, in the field of books or, uh, uh, you know, reading, writing or any of that. but. Everybody is special and uh, to me my books are special and my work is special and I won't even recognize if somebody is looking down on me uh, You know, I won't even recognize probably you know subconsciously. I'll just move on Yeah, but as your experience as a child, you know a writer who's writing not for the serious older people But you know late teens young ad adults and beyond like a younger demographic How has that uh, you know affected you? Actually, uh, to be honest, I don't really think anybody has looked down on me for writing. Uh, uh, I don't mean necessarily no, look down. Uh, that's what I How meant. do you feel about writing these oh, things? I love it. You know, I write because that excites me. You know, if I have to write an academic book on the Gupta dynasty, you know what, it would bore myself to death. I wouldn't be able to do it. But if I can fictionalize something, because I'm a storyteller. We all are storytellers. Right. So, and some of us, uh, you know, put ourselves through the agony of writing it. 
we could just be telling this story to others and be done with it uh, <laughs> but uh, and going through the publishing process huh, which is like killing let me tell you yes <laughs> uh, yeah so i i enjoy writing what i write as i said you know i started off as an amar chitra katha uh, writer honestly to me that was like a dream come true my god i am writing for amar chitra katha I, i grew up with amar chitra katha but then i went to a lit fest and uh, uh, one of the fellow authors like oh my god i'm so sorry i never even looked at who writes amar chitra kathas i'm like oh thanks you know <laughs> 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 now yes. you know there is a face <laughs> so like that and after that uh, you know i wrote a uh, contemporary mildly romantic uh, fiction because i was so tired of being in the mythological world the historical world the research i wanted to do some armchair writing honestly so i just did that and uh, that was fun too and people do ask me you know why do you like keep flitting between genres i mean how does it matter you know that's uh, who i am as a person but uh, answering your question i enjoy writing whatever i have written you know i never really tailored it to the market or to people or uh perfect perfect so another common thing uh, about the two guests that i have today is that both of them have just almost just released a book yours i think was last week of this january right yeah and uh, yours was 3 or 4 months back okay. yeah So um uh, tell us about you because we've just heard at length from Vani so I'm sort of giving focus on the male voice here. Um tell us a little about this book and why everybody should buy it for the young girl young boy in their life. Um I don't know I know I never I never uh, pitched my book to anyone actually I've just written it. So I'll uh, I'll just tell uh, basically it's the third part uh, so I've just I've read two books actually simultaneously like a month apart actually one is a book on durga which is a very fascinating take on the entire um, you know navratri and basically the idea of durga's mythology and um, so that is one book that has been published by Simon and Schuster and the other one which is just released is the third book of the narsimha trilogy which is uh, which has been going for the last 3 years now uh called pralad so i'm sure pretty everyone pretty much knows who pralad is um so it's a uh, it's a continuation of the entire entire trilogy and so these are the two books that i could think so while while in terms of story i don't think so i have to talk to you about story because you already know about durga and, and uh, uh pralad most can of I, it can i just cut you here Please. when you're writing this story you're saying all of you know it but you know when we are talking about the young adult audience they don't know that story So how do you pitch no, that? No, I think I it? think I think there is a lot of underestimation going on because I have a lot of young readers who message me personally who will be like you are doing saying it wrong. Okay. Yeah yeah and they are 13 14 year olds also. Okay. Yeah 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 they know So much. then there are more Kevin missiles in the making. No, I would love to see more Kevin missiles you know I am I'm, I'm a very narcissistic guy so I would love <laughs> to see myself you know in everyone. <laughs> A- and yeah. more about uh, the the writing so the, yeah the the, 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 the the writing is fantastic yeah. so the, the writing is beautiful these two books <laughs> the, i meant the yeah. plot is amazing <laughs> guys you should definitely <laughs> check it out i think it will be at the stores uh, but uh, see the thing is at the end of the day what matters is um, i like to uh, don't uh, pitch my books in terms of telling the story of it and telling this i personally feel that um, basically you if you pick up my book you read the summary you will understand what it is a little bit about what i can say though that uh, i have put my heart and soul into it there are a lot of concepts in it which probably i have tackled with like for instance with durga i have tackled with something which is uh, about uh, feminism and collective feminism and about what it means to basically stand up uh, to a patriarchal society right and then there is a, a book on pralad which is about the right to choose your own uh, faith okay. so uh, these are the two topics which i've talked about and these are two topics which are very close to so um, in terms of story and how i portray these ideas that's the fun stuff right but so my books are more like infotainment you know wow. there's a little bit of information and there's a lot of entertainment And yeah so you read to learn but you also read to escape the world and if you can provide both of them in one book you you know you're there man you know yes. oh, the question <laughs> <laughs> sorry your new book huh your oh, latest book her latest book you know and i was l- like looking at it and um 
it's like it's this king called Samudra who has a son called Rama and a son called Chandra. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, this is Chandragupta's story. You know, the way she has put it doesn't tell you that this is Chandragupta's biography or whatever. Obviously, she's writing it for younger children and she's making it very close. You know, there's a way to to deliver a story under the skin of the reader. And you do that beautifully in this book. So you have to tell us more about that. Hey, thanks, Nadita. Yeah, see, and also, um, the moment we say Chandragupta, what comes to mind is Chandragupta Maurya. You know, the Chandraguptas from the Gupta dynasty, uh, nobody even thinks. The moment I said I'm writing about Chandragupta, people said, oh, Maurya. No, uh, this happened because uh, my child was probably in eighth or ninth standard at the time. And uh, I've been reading her history books, uh, the NCRT books for whatever they are worth, from the sixth standard onwards, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. And I kept thinking there are so many gaps. You know, there are the Mauryas who are hailed, then the Ashoka, of course, you know, everybody's favorite. A little bit of Kanishka. And then we go straight down to, uh, you know, no southern uh, representation and no Guptas, no Shungas. You go straight down to the Mughal era and then, uh, no, the Islam uh, era and then uh, the Sultanate. And then you go to the Mughal era, British era, finished. So I thought, you know what, we have to fill these gaps. Uh, so that is when I took up, because Samudra Gupta is... Uh, uh, one of the most hailed uh, kings of India, you know, uh, and they didn't, he didn't conquer India for the sake of conquering. He already had this idea of, uh, uh, a, you know, united India. He kept telling people that, you know, if India is not united, then we are going to get attacked. So I think that vision, his son carried through and then their political acumen and their strategies, it was just fascinating. As I said, I kept researching, I kept reading. I forgot that, you know, I was even, uh, I started off writing for a YA audience where I didn't have to do so much <laughs> research. Now, but then I thoroughly enjoyed learning about them as well. Uh, I think the book has, uh, I, I, as Kevin said, you know, uh, there are 12, 13 year olds uh, who write to me saying, oh, I enjoyed the book, but is it from uh, Devi Chandraguptam that you have taken? I'm like, oh my God, that's the play. So kids know that, you know, at 12, 13, at 14, they're telling me, oh, I, I have read that play also, but I read it on Google and, you know, whatever, I like what you have done. So th they're both, they're very uh, in tune. So I'm glad I wrote it for the young adult audience, uh, though at that time it was because uh, I wanted to appeal to my daughter, you know, it was, it became like a challenge, hey, you know what, Rick Reardon, put him aside, read me, sort of a thing. <laughs> Uh, so and also in some uh, weird sense my humor appealed to her so I thought you know why not just uh, uh, I have a tested audience at home and why don't I do it she became my you know beta tester she read it chapter by chapter and at times she said no this is not gonna work and yeah that was fantastic so Vani as far as uh, you know I can look back at your career so you started with mythology you started for uh, with Amar Chitra Katha stories you moved into a play which you kind of then transcribed into prose and you know wrote it as a story form you wrote a romance you went into history so what next from Vani Mahesh and why should we all hold our breath waiting for that book to come I, I don't know. I really don't know. Probably, uh, you know, more historicals because I'm in that, uh, you know, saga now. So, I, as I said, there are gaps uh, that the textbooks are not covering. So, I am picking those out and I am reading and whoever appeals to me will be my next hero. So, but wow. probably a historical. Okay. So, you have mostly consistently written about mythological characters, right? Um, are you done with them or are you just getting started? Uh, what do I see in your future? Huh. Um, I, that's, a, that's, a very, that's a very existential que question. You know, I think uh, 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 where do I see myself in the future in terms of writing? In, uh, see, every writer, you know, they want to explore further, right? I mean, I believe it was uh, even Stephen King, you know, and I think around the 80s or 90s, he was so done with horror, writing horror, that he was like, I want to write something else. So he uh, he had a pseudonym for himself as well, because his name was so popular with horror only. So it becomes pretty tough, but then he ventured back into being a, a you know, horror writer only, because he realized that that's what he's paid for at the end of the day. So I think uh, uh, where I personally feel is I love mythology. I have, uh, I am, I always try to say that, oh, I'll write romance, I'll write action, I'll write thriller, I'll write something or the other. But eventually it somehow becomes about mythology. I have written a thriller book. It's a, it's a not a well-known book 
because I also didn't promote it that much, you know. I didn't, and it was during the COVID times as well that that book was released. Uh, it was called Yama, and it was a thriller book. It was a contemporary thriller book, but it again took inspiration from Yamdu, you know, mythology as well. Because and it was not supposed to do that. It was supposed to talk about AI, and it ended up becoming about uh, the God of Death. So, um, uh, well, you know, now if you think about it, but uh, so that's how it is. And um, while I might say that I am done, I think my mind and my body doesn't allow it. So, yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to start thinking of your questions. But I thought I'll give uh, Kevin a chance to ask Vani one question he's been wanting to ask. Even if it's for her, your phone number, it's okay, Vani. Uh, one question to Vani. Yeah. You will have to ask no, no, him I would, a question I would love too. To, I would love to exchange notes. Uh, you know, please. I mean, love to get your number as well and Absolutely. get love to get exchange notes. Though, but I have a question though because you talked about Chandragupta one, I guess, right? Chandragupta first. I don't know how do you pronounce that. Uh, um, and not Chandragupta Maurya because that's what people think about, right? So, because uh, when they say about Chandragupta, I wrote about Vikram and Vetal. So that book is going to be released by Audible. It's an audio book, and. Uh, you know what I realize is that Chandragupta the first is considered. It's called Vikram Aditya as well, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And so, do you think that somewhere Vikram Vital story was kind of connected with the Chandragupta one story, and Vital is like a representation of the Scythians who attacked India, the Huna or whatever, the foreigners who attacked uh, uh, India, India as well at that time? So, do you see that those parallels? Do you think that there could be something like that? Actually, you know what, the, there has been many debates about this. Is this Chandragupta, the Chandragupta Vikramaditya? Uh, and uh, the scholars have deduced that they are not the same. So, uh, with that, I think this is a really good analogy because, you know, most of the time you always have this formidable enemy who just doesn't get away. And for Chandragupta, it was the Skydians, as you said. Uh, but maybe I didn't think on these lines uh, because you think very differently. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, why not? Though uh, Chandragupta and uh, the Vikramaditya who comes in Vetal are apparently not the same. So. Oh yeah, my question. Where do you have the energy to write so much? You are like a non-stop writer. My wife is laughing loudly. So I think I think I'll, I'll tell you. I, I'm seeing a few missed anniversaries in the background, right? Uh, no, we just got recently married. We got married in what November? Okay. Yeah, oh. yeah, we got Congrats. married in November. So we are we are yet to miss an anniversary. So we are she's waiting for that. So I think, but <laughs> but yeah, we missed an honeymoon though. That's for sure. We have to go after marriage. Uh, but see, the thing is, uh, I think uh, the where the energy comes from is one of the basic. Uh, thing is that I take it as a discipline. I don't take it as a creative endeavor. I take it as a discipline that you have to write it, otherwise you'll not get paid. Uh, th that is how that is how I take it. So you have to take it as a job at the end of the day. If you take it as a job, you'll be paid as a job. If you take it as a hobby, then it'll be paid as a hobby. It's as simple as that, you know. Great answer. This is something that I've learned from my daughter's age boy, which I needed to learn because I write as a hobby and I will write as a job from now. I didn't know that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I will write as a job from now. Um, I will. I hope you enjoyed the session. Mm -hmm.